Hey guys, this is Snack Tech 8, and look what we've got here! <laughs> Some more dumb game. It's Donkey Kong 64, part 25. We're one-fourth of the way to 100. You know, there have been some Let's Plays of this game that have been over 100 parts. Shoutouts to Exits Tyler. Um, <laughs> but uh, this one ain't gonna be. In fact, this one's almost over. We're taking this cannon. There maybe have been some other stuff I could have done on DK Isles, but as far as I know, I don't remember. I don't remember what we have and haven't done. Also, I, no, I think Diddy has something to do up here in this lobby. Also, I just wanted to get on the way with this game. I just wanted to do the next level. Anything else? He doesn't, damn it! He, well, he does, but it's behind a DK switch. I thought it was a peanut switch, as that would only make sense, one would think. So I should have just stayed as Dong, but I didn't. Um, yeah, there may have been some other little things here and there. We've pretty much got every ability we need. There's only one more move to get from Cranky left in this level, and it's not something I don't, I think you really need it all in DK Isles, so we really probably could have just finished everything up there, but for the sake of it, I didn't want to. Instead, we're gonna do the last level because it's super rad. Probably favorite level in the game. If I, I can't remember if I said that about another level so far. I might have said it about Frantic Factory, but if I did, I was wrong because this is definitely my favorite one. That one's close. Factory is pretty close up there. Angry Aztec, pretty close up there. But I really think this, um, which is also gonna be our final level of the game, is definitely my favorite. And we're gonna, we're just gonna have a good time going through it. There's kind of a lot to do, actually, I think, in this lobby, because Chunky has a rock to throw over here, and then there's a lanky pad underneath it. DK is the Kong I think I want to be starting off this level with, so pretty lame that uh, I gotta do all this switching right up here. But as far as lobbies go, this one's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty simple. Crystal Caves definitely had the most... Uh, extensive lobby. All the other ones are just kind of little rooms. But man, what could this level be? Is it a is it a castle? Is it a cave? Or a, a keep? Is it a goop zone? There's goop in the moat there. I don't know. I think what this what the lobby to this at least reminds me a lot of is um the the like slime climb or no it's not slime climb that's like one of the first levels one of those last the, that last level in um, K rules keep uh, in DKC two where there's like slime coming up it's it's not slime climb right <laughs> it's a different level I don't know there's like green goop and you have to play as Ratley and all that that's what it makes me think of that's at, at least I don't, I don't, the level I don't think is very much like that but if you were coming in here having played the DKC games and you saw that lobby, you'd be like, oh, maybe this is going to be kind of like K. Rule's Keep. This is, again, proves uh, Searchlight Seek definitely the easiest minigame. Just, like, maybe second easiest, first being uh, that turtle one, Teetering Turtle Trouble. Not hard, though. Then I think that's probably the last time we'll see it. I want to say it is. Um, and just, actually, how, how are we looking for our uh, DK Isles bananas? Lanky's done, Tiny's not done, almost is. Chunky's got a couple to go, DK's got a blueprint to get, Diddy's done. Yeah, we're actually, we're doing pretty good. I think, um, we'll really only spend one more, uh, episode on anything other than, like, this level in the very end of the game, which is crazy. It's exciting that we're getting so far. I feel like there's so much I haven't said. Damn. So many memes I haven't made. Did you guys know this is one of the most memed games of all time? Like, Donkey Kong is like one of the illest memes of the of the day. Maybe not even so much anymore. A couple years ago, he was really big. The whole like, Span Dong craze was happening. But I think there's still some good meme to be had. I just feel like all that stuff's been said before, so it would just be unoriginal to say it. Here's the, this splat. He's he's running for his life, and K. Rule says, "Choose your last words more carefully, if I were you." Who's there? Oh no! He's gonna ice his own man. That's harsh, dog. That's a tiny splat. Well, we probably would have had to do the job anyway. 
Any last requests? Would you like a banana? There's something coming up. What could it be? I'm really there. I'm almost safe. This is actually, um... This little cutscene here is interesting in that it's showing us an area that we'll actually be visiting on our own um, sometime in the future. Oh, but there's a giant red clap trap! Are there even red clap traps? I don't think there even are. Anyway, that guy got got. That guy's dead. He, he fucking actually died. And we're here in Creepy Castle, not caring at all. Um, because this level is so good. Um, this is, again, the last proper level of DK64. It's both, I guess, the castle-themed level and the horror-themed level. And those are two themes that I both really love. Um, so that just that perfect marriage of cool stuff and uh, pretty solid design, I think, overall makes uh, Creepy Castle definitely a highlight of the game for me. It's just, um, I mean, they're, they're, it being the last level in a game that I think the difficulty does definitely increase in, Creepy Castle sure does have its share of uh, frustrating moments. Um, but I think overall, I just, as far as both design and just uh, level layout and gameplay all goes, I think I just like this one the most. I just think it's just a, such a solid. Yeah, we're starting off with the barrel blast here. The only problem I have with Creepy Castle is that it's so close to being a uh, like a perfect loop, like a perfect run of a level. But there's one little little there's a little bit of a back and forth going that needs to be done um, just uh, before we really dig into the level proper here. I'm gonna try to whoa. I'm trying to knock all that out in one episode. It's not the worst. It's definitely not like unorganized like I feel like Fungi Forest is. But it's a little uh, back and forth we're going to be doing for Creepy Castle. Um, that opens up this little tree. I guess we actually don't really need to be going into that yet. Um, but I figured, why not? Might, might as well play it. Why not? One thing I do like about this level is there's a lot of bananas in paths. Um, I missed one back there. I think I am going to try to go back and get it. There's a lot of um, bananas leading along the the areas that you'll generally just be walking through, and uh, that makes it pretty easy to pick them up. This is, I think, this is, I think I mentioned this at one point earlier on in the Let's Play, but this is the only, I think this is the only level where you must get more than 75 bananas with each Kong to enter Trop and Scoff. I think if you were gonna do it all equally. It's 400 is the banana cost, which I think would come out to 80 uh, bananas needed from each Kong. Is this, is this where the warp pads are? Jeez, what is... Oh, this is where Diddy's barrel thing is. We might as well just activate these right now, though. Um, yeah, I think if you were going to do it equally, you were going to distribute it, you'd need 80 bananas from each Kong. Um, what I'm probably going to do is just pick up the ones that I see, and usually... You know, if we're getting the banana metal and just a couple more, we'll usually end up just with, you know, the right amount we need. I didn't even activate the five pad. Come up, drawbridge. Um, so I definitely need to make note of the music track for Creepy Castle, which I think is just a really good one. It's not one of my... Maybe it's not my favorite favorite, but it's definitely among my favorites. It's got this cool um, mixture of the very Grant Kirkhope spooky effects. Um... And also this really kind of swingy, like, jazzy little bit that uses the intro theme. Or not, maybe not the intro theme, but, like, the theme that plays when Donkey Kong in the arcade game is, like, climbing up the ladder. Like the... It plays that, and it uses that in the level tune. I think this maybe is a weird level to use that in, but it also works to make a cool song. And really, what can you do in life? What can you aspire for in life other than to make a cool song? I think that's probably the crowning achievement of man. Um, we're going to switch to... We're, so, generally, how I like to do this level is it's very vertical. Um, it's probably the only DK64 level that's designed this way, and that most of the travel you're going to be making is up and down the level, as opposed to, like, around it horizontally. Um... And what I would like to be able to do in Creepy Castle is to go just straight down from the bottom up to the top. Started from the bottom, now we're here. That's how I want to do it. But unfortunately, um, kind of like in Crystal Caves, there's some moves closer up here to the top that we're going to need for stuff down at the bottom. 
So we're going to make this little climb here. I'm going to grab a couple things here and there. And then we're going to head back down to the bottom and work our way up. Just uh, going to climb the shaft. Just stroke the pole. <laughs> we're going to switch to Tiny also. I think she's got some bananas on the little path up here too. She do. I think it's Tiny and DK. DK has... You so we got 50 bananas there for DK. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you can enter the level as him and just kind of get an, get an idea of where the level's going, follow the path, and you can just rack up a bunch of bananas already. Alright, so Cranky is the reason we had to come up here. I would like to collect the rest of those bananas, but we'll, we'll leave it for now. We'll see him as Tiny, I suppose. Don't want to play Jetpack, never again in my life. I will buy your last move, though. It's... Super Duper Simeon Slam. Big up but Bashium. I bet you guys all saw this coming. Um, there wouldn't just be two uh, <laughs> two versions of Simeon Slam, right? Every Nintendo game works in threes, and this one's no different. This one allows us to uh, hit red switches. Um, the only level in the game that has red switches is this one. So there, there's the Simeon Slam, I guess, for Tiny. It, again, they all look different now, too. Um, it's cool, but for the most part, they're pretty unchanged. Let's see what we want to do now. I think I might just... I think Tiny actually has a uh, Kasplat, like, down here. So we'll probably get this, and then... I don't know, man. We'll do something. <laughs> as much as I like Creepy Castle, I definitely believe it's the level I have the least... Uh, know how about which is fine because even then I, I we're not gonna get lost or anything but as far as really knowing the fastest way to get around probably my least experienced one but it makes sense because it's at the end of the game and uh, sometimes I'll just play this game and not do a full complete playthrough and then I'll never get to creepy castle which is a shame though because I do love it and we're gonna take you out Get wrecked! And I think we're just gonna backpedal towards... Jeez, I hope this is the right area. I always get these two areas mixed up. If this is the one with the little sliding door thing, then I am going the right way. But if it's not, I'm gonna be peeved. I'm gonna be miffed, to say the least. Another interesting thing I think about Creepy Castle, this is the only level with, like, abundant bottomless pits. If you fall off here, you're done. And no other uh, DK64 level is like that. They all take place in very grounded areas. Um, I think in... This is the one, right? Yeah, the blue balloons, I think, are right. <laughs> balloons? Bananas. We'll grab those, I suppose. Um, I think we want to head to the end of this hallway before we start doing some stuff in here. Um, yeah, it's interesting that... Uh, that it, this is the only one that's like that. I, I mean, there's definitely places to fall off in other levels. There are some in Fungi Forest, in the cabins and stuff, and like that Diddy one. But this is the only one that has like, that's floating in the air, like a real like bottomless pit kind of situation. And I think in that, it is pretty interesting. Um, I like that about it. It reminds me a lot of Thwomp's Fortress, or Womp's Fortress from uh, Super Mario 64, but I think what's funny is that Womp's Fortress is like one of the first levels in that game. It takes this game an entire game to put like a floating fort level. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, we got Sniper, which is actually just a scope for our gun. Um, that's gonna be... Handle, Kongs are hand, all handling seriously cool shooters now. They've just gained a Sniper mode. You can see and shoot farther. Enter aiming sight mode and press the right C button, left C to zoom out, Z to slow down the movement. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Did not even know you could do that. I think we may have just gotten an ammo upgrade too. I wanna say we have. I think it's like 200 now or something. Or maybe we already had that. I don't know. There's a tiny balloon floating around in there. I'm probably gonna get that. But um, since we have Lanky out right now, and all the Kongs have something to do in this little crypt area, uh, we'll, we'll just keep rolling with him. Um, one of my other favorite things about Creepy Castle, maybe my favorite thing about the whole level, 
is how varied and interesting the different like sub areas are um the music track in this little crypt area and then there's a, there's one in another area too um used to terrify me when i was younger um i've always actually been kind of spooked by music in general music's one of the things i think that has the the biggest capacity to strike fear into the hearts of people like it's not it rarely is would you describe music as scary but i think just the way i relate to it a lot is like i don't know certain songs have always just been scary sounding to me um and this is definitely the, the, some of the songs in this game when i played it as a wee lad definitely were some i mean these songs are themed to be scary sounding that's i think i maybe just misrepresented what i was trying to say there I think what I meant was, like, as opposed to, like, scary movies or stuff like that, that people, you would generally be like, oh, that's the scariest kind of media. I always have placed a, a big emphasis on how music can convey, like, fear and things like that. Because when I was a kid, everything scared me. And there were a lot of songs that scared me, too. Jeez, are we going back into spooky zone? Are we heading back into spooky March? <laughs> Happy March, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your Nintendo Switches. I'm not. I'm saving up for one. I'll probably get it when uh, maybe Mario Kart Deluxe comes out. It's hard living on your own, kids. Bills, you got bills to pay, you got food to buy. It ain't easy. Sometimes you just, you got plane tickets to buy. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't have money for the Nintendo Switch. But hope everybody who did get one's enjoying it, and I'll hopefully be joining you soon. Maybe we'll even see some blind LPs of Switch games coming soon. I would, I know, I, the, I, I, it's been a while since we did this, but uh, the Mario Kart 8 project is technically not over. Um, I do want to showcase the battle mode and, and all that stuff from that game. And maybe when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe comes out for the Switch, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll like show it off on that. That'd be cool, right? Show the new content, make it part of the LP. Snack Tech 8 LP Deluxe. Will you, please? I guess we can show how the scope works. With it, you can kind of zoom in and out like that. We're going to be using that a lot in Creepy Castle. It's a, it's a prevalent thing. <laughs> You'll get used to it. I think it's kind of weird that some of these powers are only introduced in this very end of the game. There's a um, music instrument upgrade too from Candy Kong that just lets us hold more instrument plays. Like, why would I ever need that? <laughs> We're at the end already. Like, what's the point? Jeez, isn't this just spooky? I love the mist on the ground in this area. Another, uh, I think another um, showing of how this is just one of the highest fidelity graphical games on the N64. Just all the effects make it just really have a lot of polish. Maybe where the gameplay, when you really spend some time with the game, you notice the gameplay isn't that polished. Um, I think the effects more than make up for it. Or they, they go a long way to making up for it. I know a lot of people... I, I seem to talk to a lot of people these days, and I used to think of... I used to feel this way very strongly, too. That, like, when it comes to video games, like, gameplay is king. And it's the most important part of a game. I find that a lot of the time people will discount other aspects of video games over gameplay. And it totally makes sense. It's a totally right opinion to have. Like, it's just looking at it, I think, in a very, like, objective way. But, like, or trying to look at it objectively, because you really can't look at anything artistic objectively. Um, but I think I've grown to really appreciate uh, visual design and aesthetics almost as much as gameplay so much so that there'll be games like um, I don't know like Jet Set Radio or something that I don't even really like playing that much and I still love the game because it looks and sounds great <laughs> and a lot of people are always like but gameplay I'm like look man it's a piece of artwork if we're gonna really insist if you're the same person who's always prattling on about how games are art we should be able to, to appreciate them in multifaceted ways, you know? The only thing not artistic about video games is Fuckboy Jones over here, who needs to go away. Nice red flash coming off of Diddy's spinning attack. 
What was I talking about? Oh yeah, I just, yeah, so, I mean, this game may not be that great, but, or, like, I, a lot of people may have complaints about how this game plays, but, like, I think if you're just looking at that, you're missing part of the coolness. Like, look at this big head thing. This skull boy? Is it, like, a woolly mammoth? What? Is it a chimp? What? Is it a monkey boy? What is it? <laughs> really, that's the questions that we need to be asking as well-informed individuals. Anyway, yeah, there's a little uh, crypt banana for everybody to get down in this little lair down here. Um, Lanky and uh, Tiny had their own little private abode off to the left there. And this is the wrong way. This is for Donkey Kong. I think Diddy's one is down here. It's just not right here. We can use this to warp back, though. I like those little warp pads in this place. Are there any other areas in this game like that? Where there's a specifically a warp pad in a little mini area? I don't think there are. This wasn't the way we went, right? Isn't this Diddy's? That's definitely not the way we went. I hope. Diddy, right? Yeah. All right, cool. That's is that is really his first five bananas? Damn, dog. Jeez, we're almost running out of time already. Here's another uh, very kind of early game esque puzzle. Just got some more chimpy charging to do. I feel like chimpy charge. We haven't seen in a little bit. We saw it in Fungi Forest. I don't think you use it in Crystal Caves though. If you hit um some of the other buttons here like out of order these little coffin things on the side will open and you'll be able to get some stuff but i think it's just like a balloon oh. nothing really much else um we'll, we'll definitely be able to get diddy to uh banana metal capacity without that and usually even though the, the banana cost is so high for the boss of this level i feel like i rarely really have a problem with it the only one i again i ever find myself running into an issue with is the half of fungi forest bananas yeah man we've just been talking about all kinds of things today talked about spooky songs and nintendo games and and uh and art <laughs> art there's a banana or there's a balloon in here for diddy kong too yeah there is we're, we're out of homing ammo too i think if we had homing ammo it would keep trying to zoom in on the uh fuck boy jones down there It'd be really annoying i always find like this is one of the rooms where i just want to burn through all my homing ammo just to be able to shoot regularly because you can't turn it off it's just like it's lame. I guess we'll be DK now. We can just warp right to his little room. Um, because I already activated it. Can we make this jump? Oh, yeah, we can. Damn, DK. The running long jump. Just cleared that hurdle. Hurdling boys. Hurdle the turtle. <laughs> I don't know. Question of the day. Or, yeah. Question of the day. Leave, leave your thoughts on any of the weird topics that I discussed in this first Creepy Castle episode. And just let me know how you're doing, I guess. It's always, that's like, that's always the question of the day. Oh man, do we, do we really want to be doing this now? What's our time at? This is going to take a long time. Hmm. You know, maybe we will. I think we'll do this and then we'll end the episode after. Because Chunky's got a thing to do in here too. And we're definitely not going to have time to get that done. Um, so to get in this little door, I think this is actually really misleading. Um, it seems simple enough. There's circles around each of the little dots that you need to pull. Or each of the little dots, and then the dots obviously correspond to these switches on the ground. That you have to use your your unique, amazing ability, Gorilla Grab, to uh, activate. But if you want to hit the, the like this one, and then this one, and then this one, it doesn't work. Like, there's there's... An order that is not defined here, where I, I guess it's saying like do the top, middle, and then bottom one. So you need to pull this top one, this top one, and then you need to come down here and pull the bottom one. And I think that's that's not really like illustrated well. And I think if you tried to do it in like any other order and it did mess up, then you could get confused and just screwed up here. That's kind of dumb, but that's how you open this door. Um, and actually, <laughs> after that explanation, I think we are going to do this 
next time. So there's some tracks leading out from this very menacing door. Whatever could it be? Find out on the next Donkey Kong! 64. Look at that face plant. Ouch, man. Later.